word up, word up. Blessing, blessing, one, two, three. Blessing, blessing, one, two, three. Uh, good afternoon, Sister King. God bless you. All right. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I see you, Sister King, and 13 other people. I don't know who they are because I can't see them. Brother Hector, God bless you, man. God bless you. Sister Plana, bless you, bless you. All right, y'all throw your watch parties. While we have our word party, throw your watch party, throw your watch party. Man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Brother Sunat, good having fellowship with you yesterday, man. Facebook Live, LT. What else we got on here? Okay, Giovanna, God bless you. All the way from Michigan. Amen. Sister Watson, good afternoon. Hey, if you're in the, in the spirit to throw a watch party, go ahead and do that right now. I want to try to cover some territory and bless some people. Uh, hither and thither. Favorite member, Erica D. Erica Allen. We got two Ericas this morning. Amen. Blessing, blessing. Thank you for coming in. Come on in. Come on in. I would say have a seat, but you can stand up for this one. Hey, big gorgeousness. All right. And y'all do my favor while y'all getting on, inviting your friends, etc., etc. Um, y'all let us know where you're from. Where you're from? Hey, I'm from, I'm from Sunrise. I'm from Fort Lauderdale. I'm from Michigan. I'm from uh, Arkansas. I'm from the show me state. You got to show me. This coffee, God bless you, Sister Lewis. All right, Sister Royster. God bless you. Tammy. Kanye's in the house. All right, Sandra Brown. God bless you. Shinari. Beatrice in the building. All right. Who else we got? Who else we got? Who else we got? Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. Hey, when you're gifted, when you're gifted, Brother Rivera, your gift make room for you. You don't know what God going to put you in and where you're going to end up at, man. Because it's his gift and not yours, you know what I mean? Natalie Paul, God bless you. Sister Sonnet, bless you, bless you. Jennifer Bryant. All the way up there in uh, Tallahassee, I think. Yeah, Tallahassee in the building. Scott Walker, Indiana. God bless you. Van Gray, my man. Good to see you, Brother Gray. Sarah, Columbia, Columbus. Always get them mixed up, mixed it up, and mixed up. Sister Williams, all the way from Valdosta, Georgia. That's my second home right there. Sister Gadsden, you're my favorite member right there. North Kakalaki in the house. All right. Chanel Nicole, the writer. You show sure right. Send Nicole Brook in the house. Keisha Goldwire in the house. So I'm going to give me some ant spray. They're yeah, attacking me. Devil getting busy through these red ants. They're trying to, they're trying to bite me. All right. God bless you. All right, blessing, blessing, one, two, three, blessing, blessing, one, two, three. Uh, this is Word Up, Word Up, Word Up, Monday, Word Up. We try to give a word every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is our effort to put forth a word of edification and encouragement uh, to keep the moving, to keep the flowing throughout the week as you climb your mountains and climb your hills. Uh, throughout life so that you can sister Colebrook press forward by faith amen amen and so we're gonna open up with a word of prayer and we're gonna talk to the father then we're gonna talk to you for just a minute father god is in the name of jesus we now bow our heads and humble our hearts and we prostrate our spirits before you father god we declare and decree that you are god and god alone god all by yourself don't need our help we just thank you father god we searched all over couldn't find nobody nobody greater nobody greater than you 
And so, Father God, with that, we magnify your name. We glorify your name. We ask, Father God, that you'll bless us even now as we spend this precious moment together for a word of devotion, a word of prayer. We ask, Lord God, that you might bless us with inspiration and aspiration that we might uh, become and desire to be all that you called us to be. We just thank you, Father God. Use me now as an instrument as I yield myself to you, Father God. Have your way and get yourself some glory. This is my prayer. This is my plea. This is my petition. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Word up, word up. So our word coming to us out of Genesis chapter number 26. One verse, one verse, one verse. It's going to be verse number 12. I think I committed it to memory. It says... Isaac sold in that land and the same year he reaped a hundredfold uh, and the Lord blessed him. He sold in that land in the same year he reaped a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. I try to come up with a little tag and a title. I'm just going to call this so. S-O-W. S-O-W. So the text indicates that you know, Isaac is doing something in this passage that's just counterintuitive. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it, it don't even make sense. It's uh, paradoxical. If you saw him doing it, you'll say something wrong with that dude right there. Something, something wrong with that man right there. And so to appreciate what Isaac is doing, because it's kind of natural for us to sow whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And sowing and reaping is a natural law that becomes a spiritual law with God. And uh, it, it's like the natural course of things, the natural. If you put something in, you're going to get something out. Uh, whatever action you put forth, there's going to be a reaction. You know, some people call it karma, but if you stick to the word of God, it, it's just sowing and reaping. And so that's the natural process. But why is it counterintuitive for Isaac uh, to be sowing in that land? And why is it unusual for God to bless him a hundredfold, to give him a hundred times more than what he sowed? And why does the Bible say the Lord blessed him? Well, the backdrop is there's a, there's a famine in the land. If you get, grab uh, Genesis chapter 26 and begin like at verse number one at the top of the text, you'll find out that, that Isaac is the second generation that found himself in, in the land of Canaan. And it don't necessarily belong to Abraham and his descendants just yet. That's, that's going to happen a little bit later when Joshua come back and lead the people back into it. But for now, they're kind of staking the territory. They're marking the territory. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so, so, so now Isaac becomes uh, the prominent figure for the family of God. He, his daddy is now older, much older. You know, he had Isaac when he was about 100. And so Isaac is now a grown man. He's taken over the family business, if you will. But there's a famine in the land. Not just a famine, but there's a severe famine. And I know y'all can't appreciate that, so let me help you with it. Uh, it it's like back in these days... You either were a pastor, you had sheep and goats and cattle and cows, or, or either you were a farmer. It was an agrarian society. You know, they didn't have businesses like we have. You know, either you was a farmer or you had sheep and goats and stuff like that. So, so, so Isaac is this type of farmer as well as a pastor. So there's a famine, which means ain't no rain, ain't no rain, ain't no rain, ain't no rain. No rain, um, the grass don't grow, and if the grass don't grow, the cattle can't eat. And, and it's like it's like a ricochet kind of situation. One thing impacts another. One thing affects another. If this ain't working, that ain't going to work either. It's like if one train stopped, all the trains got to stop. And, and it's kind of like a situation that we have like right now. So, so the Bible says that Isaac is in a community of Philistines. The Philistines know that, man, we're in a, man, it's rough. Man. man, the struggle is real. The Philistines know that. It don't even make sense to even plant nothing right now because there ain't no rain. How you going to plant a seed? There ain't no rain. Because if you plant a seed, you need the rain to water the seed. And then the seed can blossom and bloom and grow and yield some fruit. But, but Isaac got there, you know, here in these fields, he's digging these holes and he's putting the seed in the ground. And, and people kind of like watching him say, man, what's, 
What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? Uh, what is he smoking? Is he is he drinking something? Man, it ain't rained around here about a year. The ground is dry. The, the ground is tough. And it's hard to even crack into the ground because, uh, you know, it's hard. And because we're in the middle of a famine, it's like a downturn in the economy. And, and it's like, this is not the season, my brother, to be planting no seeds. Man, you crazy, ain't it? You're going to waste your seed. You got precious seed. You can use that seed at another season at another time. But see, Isaac knew something about God that everybody else didn't know. Isaac knew that as long as he had a seed, he didn't have to worry about the externals. You, you follow me? He didn't have to worry about stuff that he could not control. All he needed was a promise. All he needed was a word from God. He took that word, invested that word, planted that word in the ground, planted that seed in the ground, and guess what God did? God, you know, blessed him to multiply his seed, not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. He got a hundred times back what he planted. Now, now, if he planted, let's say, let's, let's say he planted a hundred trees. You know how many he got back? He got back a thousand. That's a hundredfold. Unbelievable. And so now the Philistines, uh, Sister Gass and the Philistines saying, man, what's going on here? So they're passing by his fields. And they say, man, I don't get it. Our crops can't grow. We ain't got nothing in our field. It's like a desert out here. And this one man, that's a stranger. He not even from here. How is it that all his stuff green and everything else is dead? Uh, the cattle are skinny because they ain't got nothing to eat. They fall off. And, and the flowers are withering. And, and, and the grass is, is shriveling up. Why? Because ain't no water. But, but somehow, some way, God is blessing this one man to sow his seed. And God is blessing his seed. And he's getting a return on his seed. And the Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. Now, if you read further in the text, the Bible says he's envied too. Because they envied him. They said, man, how in the world? He come into our place, so in our land, at a time of famine, and he get all of these collard greens back, you know, all of these turnips back, you know, his turnips are coming up. That's because if, if you do what God wants you to do, and if, if you sow your seed, even when it don't make sense, uh, if you put your faith forward, even when it's counterintuitive. Now, let me, let me put this in your mailbox. If you start your business now, say, man, don't be starting no business now. It's, Man, it's, it's the struggle. Is, it's rough around here. You know what I mean? Why, 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 start, why start doing new ministry now? Man, it's already rough. People ain't hardly giving. Um, why, why move out on a new vent? Why go to school now? Why take up a new profession now? Why start a new career now? Um, why, why start a new investment now? Don't you know we're in a depression? We're in a recession. Why, why start something new now? It don't even make sense. Well, that's exactly what Isaac did. He just sold. Well, ain't no rain. So uh, the economy, you know, falling apart. So with people advising you that this is not the thing that you want to do right now. So, well, it don't make sense to the experts. So. Well, the people ain't going to support you in what you're doing. So, why you start a new business right now? Won't you, won't you wait until the economy turn around? So, um, well, 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 the people ain't going to buy the stuff from you. So, and, and people ain't going to um, network with you. They're not going to open the door for you right now. So, see, see, God's success for you is not predicated on what people understand. See, a giraffe can't be taken all day and all night trying to explain stuff to turtles who who don't have vision who can't see beyond where they are see when when you sow what you're saying is i'm gonna give god some time i'm just gonna wait till my change come but i know that my change is going to come and when you give it to god and when you trust god with it 
leave the, the micro details and the micromanaging the God. You ain't going to be able to micromanage God. All you got to do is so. And if they say it don't make no sense, say so. If they say we ain't going to help you, say so. If they say we ain't going to support you, say so. If they say it, and it don't make sense and, and the doors are not going to open for you, you say so. And, and if people envy you, you say so. If they don't like you, you say so. If your enemies become even more of an enemy, you say so. Just do what God has called you to do. And even though it don't make sense, right in the middle of a famine, you just go ahead and do what God has called you to do. Celebrate life now. Don't wait till the corona leave. Throw your praise party now. Well, what y'all, what's all that excitement about? Uh, we just sowing because we know our change is going to come and we know that God is going to bring us through and we know that God going to give us uh, better days. And I can hear Leandria Johnson singing this song right now. Better days are coming. So don't wait till the tide change. Don't wait for the season to change for you to do what God has called you to do. When you got faith, it don't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what your neighbors are doing. It doesn't matter what your best friends are doing. It don't matter who in a new relationship and who ain't new, in a new relationship. All you need to do is prepare yourself for what is to come. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I hope just pray that this word have been a blessing to your life. And when they look at you sideways, look at you cockeyed and look at you crazy, you just say, so. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. We'll see y'all tomorrow, about this time tomorrow, for Word Up, Word Up, Word Up Tuesday. God bless you. Just so. All right. Well, my phone be tripping. I guess my phone's saying so. I'm trying to end the video. And my phone saying so. <laughs> All right. This happened to me yesterday. All right, Brother Blackman, I'm just going to call the road. Brother Blackman, Keisha, uh, yeah, so, so, just so. You know what I mean? Hey, you ain't, you ain't married yet? And uh, you go shopping for your dress right now? Get your cooking classes, sisters? They say, ain't no good man I hear you say so. And brothers, go get your job right now. And uh, go get your tuxedo now. Go do what you need to do. Say, man, ain't no good women out here. And you say, so. You know what I mean? And for, for my brothers that have ministries, and you're saying, well, let's pull back. Let's pull back. Let's pull back. Things are bad. Things are rough. Things are tough. No, you, you, you move forward by faith. You do even more. You give more. You serve more. You preach harder than you ever preached before. You do more devotion than you ever done uh, before. You plant more seed. You plant more word. You sing more songs. You pray more prayers. You give more glory than you ever have before. You just say so. And I'm done. I'm trying to quit my thing, but somebody got to help me here. All right. My phone's saying so. Brother Daniel, you want to end this devotion? I'm saying so. And brothers and sisters, this is embarrassing. I can't. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate that, man. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's advance the church. Let's advance the kingdom of God. Let's, let's write our new books. Uh-huh. Sister uh, Chanel, let's write our new books. Let's start our new our new ventures, send the cold brook. Let's start the stuff that we started three years ago. And we're going to just say so. Keisha say, turn the phone off, Brother Daniels. If I turn the phone off, I'm scared I'm going to lose my devotion, that it won't record. Can anybody tell me that this thing is going to record even if I uh, turn my phone off? Does, does anybody know this for sure? Yeah, we're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep sewing. This happened to me yesterday. All right. All right, I love y'all too. Listen, I'm going to turn the phone off. And uh, if, if, if this devotion ain't saved, y'all go back on this thread. Find Keisha Goldwire. Look Keisha Goldwire to be exact. And hit her up and say, you told Brother Daniels to just shut the phone off. And, and he lost his devotion. Amen. All right. So, so here goes nothing. Bless y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Oh, I turned it off and brought it back up, and it's still going. Lord have mercy. All right. I don't know what else to do.
is saved in our hearts. Thank you, Sister McBride. Now, that's a word of comfort and consolation. It's saved in our hearts. Amen. You know how to make a brother feel better about what he's doing. This thing not shut off. Okay. All right. All right. Here goes nothing again. <laughs>